just get the energy from Scott. You know, he is like, you know, the nucleus. He's the, the runner. So we're out here just out here supporting him. Yeah, yeah, buddy! Hey. Yeah. 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 Woo! Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> That's ball, man. Fuck yeah! Nice job, man. Nice job. Nice job. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, Ballistic run, second year in a row. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give him his medal right now. So let's Dan. put the medal around your neck first before we chat. Dan. Okay, so he's standing up. I'll, I'll go wide. Okay. Medal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you crossed the line today in 25 hours, 41 minutes, 18 seconds. Yeah. So uh, you are officially the winner of the 2006 Keels Badwater Ultra Marathon. Uh, but you know we've been waiting quite a while to see if that were the case. So the, the next question is, uh, have you ever heard of Akos Konya? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, but uh, I did today. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he crossed the line in 25:58, having uh, started the race four hours before you in the 6 a.m. wave. So obviously, uh, were you expecting everybody who was uh, a threat to the overall victory to be on the start line exactly with you? Well, or did I was, you think about maybe the six or eight a.m. people? Um, well, I was hoping that's the case. <laughs> they get a little less heat if they run <laughs> the six and eight um, a.m. waves. But um, yeah, I just didn't know. I mean, you never know. There's always unknowns out there, I guess. And, right. Uh, when somebody said that, um, I think I first heard about it, actually at Stovepipe, well, somebody had told me that he had come in, it was, um, it was like 63 minutes, I think, uh, ahead. Yeah. So, it was, um, a, it was a big surprise. 30 minutes ahead of you. So, Stovepipe Wells was the first you realized you weren't actually in the... Panamint, it was 63 Oh, that Panamint, yeah. I'm sorry, Panamint, it was 63 So, but, were you leading your wave at, uh, at what point did you take the lead of the 10 a of wave once and for all? I took the lead um, probably somewhere after Darwin. Um, no, actually, it was before that. Um, I, I took the lead before Stovepipe. I think it was about like eight nine miles before Stovepipe. Yeah. But then a little while later, you found out that there weren't were actually in the yeah. Lead. There are a couple of guys. In fact, um, I don't recall his name. Yeah. A gentleman from France. Yeah, he was Stephon, up there as well. Stephon Blissier. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was um, definitely threw a twist into uh, my, uh, my plans, that's for sure. Now, I know that uh, your wife, Leah, does a lot of things to help you stay in the game mentally. Mm -hmm. And uh, was she keeping you abreast of the, the other runners ahead of you a lot, or mainly keeping you focused on just doing the best you could do? Um, well, I was, that was the biggest thing from the start. Um, because I was running, I think at one point, maybe seventh or eighth um, in the beginning of the race mm -hmm. uh, with the 10 a.m. wave starters. And I was just planning on running my own race. I took it a lot easier this year. Um, I mean, it was a lot more humid. It was, uh, I don't know what the official high was um, yesterday, but it was hot. Yeah. Very hot. And so my plan was just to run my race, but um, definitely, you know, it helps to know what's going on. So Leah and my crew did a great job of conveying that. Uh, more importantly, she kept me in the game mentally. I had a really low point uh, after Darwin where uh, I was really struggling with uh, just uh, being into, into it mentally. Um, it was tough. You know, my plan was to run under 24 hours. I thought, you know, I'd be able to do that. I had, you know, rested legs, didn't have Western States on my legs. And uh, I thought you know, I'd be able to run even faster than that. And I am shocked now how fast I ran last year, mm -hmm. having run Western States before. And uh, I'm not sure what it was. Uh, but well, it's I a just good training run. I wasn't as sharp. I, I mean, training-wise, I was in great shape. Um, but yesterday I, or, and today, I was just not where I normally am for my peak racing. So yeah. I ran a decent race, but I just didn't feel like I had it at times. Love the event. It's a great event. but. It's, uh, it is uh, very tough. And to do it, you know, back to back years too. Um, it reminded me yesterday and today how brutal it is. <laughs> it's just, 
So other than just feeling like you were sort of challenged more this year compared to last year, do you have any specific problems? Did you get sick or have blisters I, or I didn't like get that? sick. I might have had um, just a few small blisters. Um, really, I played it really conservatively, and I, if anything, maybe that took me out of my game some. I ran very conservatively into stovepipe, which I thought was a good plan, and uh, my weight was staying very consistent, um, no stomach problems, so, you know, usually I like to run kind of on that edge a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what it was. You were out here training for a few weeks, right, in, in Death Valley? Yeah, I trained for little over two weeks um, in Death Valley and um, now I'm kind of wondering if I maybe did too much. <laughs> I tapered and everything but um, being in the heat because um, we've been camped out uh, in Panama Springs so for two weeks <laughs> um, we, went, we went back to Ridgecrest for a couple days in between but yeah almost for two weeks. Wow yeah so it was very hot at night and I don't know maybe that was part of it too it just was a little bit too too much. So word of the wise, maybe uh, heat acclimatization is uh, <laughs> Don't overdo it. <laughs> Don't overdo it. <laughs> the what? Dusty.